Trying to make a water-based finish look more like an oil-based finish? I think we can. And how can we still use water-based, but make it look like it's an oil-based finish? How do we bring that life back into the wood, even if the top coat doesn't impart a whole lot of color? And I think we've got a few good options here. Now there are three pretty common ways that you can go about uh, bringing this extra life to that water-based finish. And they're all based on the same principle, and that is putting some color into the wood first before we add our top coat. We're not really gonna do anything with the top coat itself, although you could, uh, that's probably a fourth method that you can use. But these are the three uh, that I find to be the easiest, the most accessible, um, and the most likely for you to have some success with. Uh, so let's take a look at each individual one. Uh, before we do that, I just wanna mention, we will have, like any good experiment should, controls. I have one board here that I have from a previous um, practice uh, piece that I had made that's coated with um, General Finishes semi-gloss. Okay, that's gonna be our oil control. And then I've got another board which I haven't coated yet, but that's gonna receive the uh, General Finishes polyacrylic semi-gloss. This is also gonna be the water-based material that's gonna to top coat these other three experimental boards. Now the first option we're gonna look at is the application of an oil. And we're not talking an oil-based varnish here, we're just talking oil. Um, boiled linseed oil, in fact, is a relatively pure oil, but it's had uh, chemical dryers added to it that helps it cure. Now you can use something like a, a pure tongue oil, uh, but tongue oil has a little bit more of a reputation for not yellowing quite as much over time. And that's actually something that we really want in this case. So I'm just gonna stick with the boiled linseed oil, plus it's cheaper. Okay, so to apply it to the surface, pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna flood it on, let it soak in. So after about five minutes, I'm gonna wipe off the excess and I'm gonna monitor the piece of wood for the next, um, I don't know, eight to 10 hours, just check it every once in a while make sure no oil is seeping up to the surface because that can happen in some uh, open poured woods and things like oak have a tendency to do that. Just get a paper towel and wipe off the excess. Now, what I'm gonna do, see boiled linseed oil takes a long time to cure and especially if you're gonna coat it with a water-based finish, obviously oil and water don't mix so it needs to be completely cured before you even think about trying to put a water-based finish on it. But there is one option that we can, uh, we can do to sort of speed up the process a little bit. You know how we always talk about shellac being a universal binder? Um, this is a perfect example of that. If I wait about three to four days, you wanna be extra cautious, wait about a week, and then I apply a nice light coat of shellac, de-waxed shellac onto the surface, then I can safely apply my water-based top coat. So that's exactly what we're gonna do with this piece. All right, so here is our boiled linseed oil board, nice and dry, and I'm gonna coat it with some shellac. And again, I'm just using the bullseye seal coat, two pound cut, clear, de-wax shellac. And remember, very quick and deliberate motions when you're using the shellac. That's it. Let that dry, probably for a good hour or two. Now our next option is to use a water-based dye um, or multiple dyes to get the color that we're after. I've got some general finishes, uh, light brown dye stain and amber dye stain, both water-based. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a mixture here that's gonna make, it's actually gonna be a pretty dilute mixture to impart that color. I really don't wanna completely dye the surface. I just wanna add a hint of color. because so I want this to be fairly dilute, I'm gonna take two parts of this light brown. Okay, clean off your measuring tool so you don't cross contaminate. And just one part amber. I don't want a whole lot of amber color, just a little bit. Okay, now I need to dilute it pretty significantly. These two were tests that I did where I diluted it maybe five parts, uh, 10 parts on the other one. Um, and they're still too intense. There's just too much color there. So I use my little spray bottle. You can see there's not really a whole lot in here. I'm just gonna keep spraying until I dilute it out far enough. And then take a little bit and try it on the surface. Use this corner down here. Now these dyes typically go on pretty dark. The color looks good, but it might look a little bit too dark. But as it dries, 
you get a little less intense color. In fact, sometimes it just looks like crap until you get your finish applied on top of it. Okay, so now what I'm seeing here, these have a little bit too much intense color. This one looks just around the point that I want it to be. I don't know if that's gonna come across in the camera the way I want it to, but it looks a lot closer to natural oil finishes, uh, to this oil-based varnish than these other two did. So that's the mixture I wanna go with. Now before I apply the dye to a surface like this, a lot of times the raw wood is very thirsty. So if it's manageable on a small piece like this, it certainly is, I still like to take a spray bottle, even though I pre-raise the grain, and I'm actually gonna pre-wet the wood so that the dye doesn't, it, so it's not as aggressive when it soaks in. There's already some water on the surface filling those pores. Now when the dye goes on, it'll actually go on a little bit more evenly because the wood's not quite as thirsty. Okay, so I'm gonna spread this dye around. Now you can see the left is just water and the right is my very dilute dye mixture. Okay, and you can see it's not a huge difference, but that may be just the amount of color that we need to make it look good under a water-based finish. Now, I'm gonna let this board dry for, I don't know, four to six hours in my climate. It's pretty dry and hot here, so shouldn't have any problem letting it dry, but it's water, so you'll know when it's dry. If you feel the surface and it's cold and clammy, a little bit damp, it's not ready yet. Okay, so we're going to seal in that color. Again, water-based dye. We're gonna hit it with an alcohol-based finish here, which is shellac, and that's gonna seal it in so that our water-based top coat doesn't pull any of that material with it. Now, even this alcohol-based material has potential to, uh, to pull some of that color. So if you can spray, that's really the best way to go because it'll uh, lay down a nice even coat uh, if you wipe, you're almost surely gonna get some dye on there, but it probably won't affect the overall color when it's all said and done. Now, we talk about shellac a lot on the show, but typically I go the lazy way, what I find to be the easier way, and I use this bullseye seal coat. It's de-wax shellac, it's about a two pound cut, and it's what they would refer to as blonde shellac. It doesn't really have a whole lot of color to it. And this is the stuff that I'm gonna use between the coats of the other finishes that we're experimenting with to seal that color in. But in this case, we're gonna do something a little different. We're actually gonna mix our own from flakes. And I just have enough, look at that. So after about three or four hours, shellac looks like it's pretty well dissolved. We can go ahead and pour it into a secondary container. And for this little sample piece, we shouldn't have much of a problem. That beautiful orange, amber kind of tone that's being imparted to the wood, it's exactly what we want. Perfect. And I think if you're, if you're not gonna spray the water-based material, this is probably uh, the next best thing. You could certainly use a nice brush if you're good with brushing technique, which I am not. Okay, so boiled linseed oil, you're first. This applicator, nice, covers the whole thing in one shot. Apply it to the dye. Here's the orange shellac board. and our natural board. All right, so I'm gonna let these dry for about three to four hours. I'll sand between coats with uh, 320 grit sandpaper, and I'm probably gonna put on a total of about three coats, and that should do the trick. All right, so these results are really interesting. Um, here's our oil control board. And here's the water control board. Now the interesting thing that I found, it may just be the varnish that I use, uh, but I don't see as much of a dramatic difference between my oil and water boards as you might think. Okay, the, the water is certainly a little paler uh, than the oil, uh, but it's not nearly as dramatic as some of these others. Now, I think I overdid it in some of these cases. For instance, like the dye. The dye was a little bit of an overshot um, compared to the oil. 
Okay, it's a, it's a completely different thing. Um, but certainly, we're, we're sort of skating in the same realm as far as it looking oil-like. What you'll notice with the dye, though, is that what we did was really pop the grain, okay? That dye sits down into those uh, really absorbent stripes there and actually intensifies the grain pattern. And by popping that grain, sort of gives it that oil look to begin with. So uh, dye is definitely a viable option for sure, but clearly is gonna take a little bit more work to, uh, to pinpoint and nail down that perfect combination of colors. Now here's an interesting comparison. Okay, this is the boiled linseed oil, and this is just a oil-based varnish. And it just goes to show you that boiled linseed oil really gives you uh, a lot of intense amber color imparted into the wood. This maple has just turned a very orangey, yellowish, uh, very, very light brown color. So you can certainly get there with that pre-coat of boiled linseed oil, uh, but you're gonna have to be very careful of the adhesion issues and things that we discussed, but that, that shellac barrier should do the trick for you. But now that becomes a three-step process just to use water-based finish. So although it works, it may not be the best option. Now here's shellac, okay? The orange shellac uh, that we got from, uh, from the Hawk Company uh, was fantastic. I think it turned out great and is probably the closest match to the oil from what I can see from my perspective here. And then you're only talking a two-step process, a pre-coat of shellac and then your water-based coat. And you know what? Almost all of my projects get a wash coat of shellac on them, de wax shellac, just because if there's any impurities on the surface or anything that uh, is not visible to the naked eye, it's a good idea to make sure you put that shellac on there. It's a light sanding sealer, essentially, and it's a great base coat for anything that you want to top coat with, whether it's lacquer, oil-based finish, or in this case, water-based. So shellac is getting a big thumbs up from me. And again, here's the water-based. So uh, I think what this says is that the water-based finishes in general are getting better and better and are looking more and more attractive. Um, I don't really think we have to worry about it as much as we might have in the past. Now keep in mind, all this changes if you're using a dark wood. Okay, water-based finishes don't necessarily look great on dark woods because they have a little bit of a bluish hue and cast to them. So maybe we'll delve into that a little bit later. But for now, on lighter color woods, I think my recommendation, any of these will work, but I think what I would probably play with the most would be the dye and the shellac, okay? And you can get the best of both worlds by combining these two. Maybe a pre-coat of dye, uh, cover that with some shellac to seal that dye in, hit it with a water-based finish, and um, you're gonna have a tough time pointing out which one is the oil-based finish. This, uh, these finishes are getting really, really good. So experiment, have some fun with it. Um, these water-based finishes are a pleasure to use in terms of you know, just, just having it in the shop. It's just not nearly as offensive to your senses uh, as the oil-based stuff. Um, but I think it's a successful little experiment and can kind of show you the differences between the base coats and what you should use in your shop. So give it a shot. Let me know what your results are because you know, this is just one experiment. There's a thousand variations of this that you can do. So uh, let me know what you wind up doing. All right, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time.